hello everyone i'm abasur and uh, today we are going to discuss about the idgc that we can also say as an it general control so basically depending on the auditors auditors can say that as an itgc or they can also refer it as a gcc so gcc stands for general computer controls so you will likely likely encounter some form of gcc assessment on every sap audit like the name suggest gcc are general they address risks common to every system regardless of vendor application or platform the specific way that these address may vary by system but the fundamental concepts is universal unlike auditing sap where audit guidance is limited and general audit knowledge is often restricted to specialist gcc are stood in the auditing professionals professionals it is a huge benefit when dealing with the gcc portion of sap audit because the specific standard and guidance are prevalent so if we have uh, understand about the gcc gcc are uh, a type of internal control broadly associated with the management processes and general operation of it function as a whole in most organization it operates as a shared service function to the business supporting organization by providing it infrastructure and support to application like sap some of the common services that it function offer uh, provide Uh, to support sap application can include maintain and administration of hardware database network upon which sap application runs management and operation of data center in which the servers running the sap application components data and databases reside including physical and environmental control over the data center management of organization help desk through which the sap related support calls may first be placed before uh, before any necessary escalation to sap support team management and control of backup and uh, archival process including storage and handling of tapes and other archival mechanisms maintenance and administration of user authorization process such as network ids and password which may ultimately fed directly to the sap through single sign on processes or monitoring uh, monitoring of system and network performances so if we talk about this in general sap uh, sap word you will be looking into more into the module sap uh, basis and security including the person who is who is looking into the operating system or databases or networking how devices are connecting or responsible for backup or archiving so this is the area where uh, where the itgcs are more uh, focused about so now there are some standard on the basis of this itgcs are getting reviewed so some of, some of them are uh, cobit so cobit also Uh, we we also say that control objective for information and related technologies so this is the co- most common it control framework addressing general computer control from an audit perspective so uh, with the onset of the uh, socs act, uh, act that is seven oxley act in united state uh, cobit took on a great importance in practice where have auditors in the past has reference portion of the cobit in their work more, much more emphasis on in the places to be on the guidance of containing in the framework so cobit framework basically groups control objective into four main categories that plan and organize acquire and implement deliver and support and then monitor and evaluate so each of these category consist of 4 to 13 processes these processes ultimately lead to the series of uh, more than 200 uh, idgc controls so may if you want to look into the detail about it i have a course on uh, cobit or you can directly uh, go to on- online on a site for the it governance institute and then look into it second where we are talking about the standard is gait so gait framework is first published in 2007 by institute of internal auditors that is iia 
this is uh, uh, like one of the newest framework that address the IT audit rather than uh, deline, uh, delining specific IT related control objectives. Uh, it's defined the risk based methodology for prioritizing the importance of those control. The first version of this framework was intended to facilitate scoping of IT controls for SOX testing. The most recent addition to this framework is uh, GAITR, which is broadened this approach to cover the interaction between IT and business risks. So, and the next which we are talking about that, that is ITIL. So, ITIL uh, stands for Information Technology Infrastructure Library. So, uh, so basically, it um, so many IT auditors has also embrace ITIL as a benchmark against which they can audit. Audit specific frameworks like COBIT typically does not prescribe specific procedure to be followed, but rather broadly discuss about the general risk that IT processes should address. As a result, industrial standards like ITIL provide objective guidance that an auditor can measure against uh, to determine if IT processes under review are in line with industry best practices or not. The next is CMM. CMM uh, stands for Capability uh, Maturity Model, which has de facto standard for system designing and development processes. When reviewing uh, ITGCs related to application changes, many auditors uh, look to CMM as a benchmark, similar to similar as we discussed about ITIL. In fact, the last few a uh, few major versions of COVID have incorporated an IT control maturity model into the framework, recognizing that control related process may mature over time depending on the relationship of the process to the overall business. And uh, we can also follow the standards of uh, ISO 27000 series. Uh, so basically, uh, this set of uh, security standards evolve from what originally was developed with British standards that is BS7799 a standard covering information security management now ISO 20, 27000 uh, series is often used by auditor to benchmark the security practices many of which fall into the broader uh, category of ITGC. So this is what the standards uh, we can look into if we are look, if we want to go for uh, SCP audit. Now let's let's look into what are the major I would say uh, the common problem areas for most of the co companies if we are talking about the general controls corresponding to SAP. The first is policies and procedure. So typically in the audit cycle, your auditor will ask to see policies and procedure related to specific area from an SCP standpoint later in the audit cycle your auditor will look at a specific SAP configuration style setting and processes to ensure compliance with these policies so this is the easiest type of audit so here before digging into the SAP specific however your auditor will look into the few specific thing existence of documented policy or procedure complete lens within these policies and procedure and obvious discrepancy between standard and industrial uh, ben benchmarks uh, max so what we need to ensure from a policy and procedure st standpoint we need to ensure uh, policies and procedures are up to date it means if we are saying uh, you know uh, the policy needs to be reviewed every year and it needs to be signed off then it should be uh, like that then the second is have a process of approving the exception to the policies uh, for example let's suppose you were saying your password length is 16 characters but there are some old system like mainframes or something which cannot follow this so the exception should be defined and uh, um, and approved next is periodically communicate and reapprove the exception so periodically access uh, reassess what are the exceptions and then get it approved and self audit against your policy that's really very important uh, self assessment you do the self assessment to understand before audit if there is any deviation from the policy next is security is a problem area 
So here, security is important. Control enabler, strong security ensures that only approved individual can affect business related data, allow duties to be segregated and enable transaction to be ticked back to individual users. Some security settings will be within SAP applications. We can address these in SAP basis or security settings. So this can include privilege SAP access privilege is like a super user access if we are saying we are giving you know SAP all or if not SAP all the the privileges which is which is corresponding to let's so user creation or role creation so such type of I would say the moreover like an administrative privilege next is user access assignment maintenance and removal so um, how what are the process while we are creating a new user changing or updating a user or we can say disabling the user in the system and the next is segregation of duties then limit and monitor the privilege access to sap infrastructure component and uh, then we need to check the user access upon changes in the responsibility like if if a person is getting transferred from one one department to another department then authorization should be changed if a person is leaving the organization then id should be disabled so we need to take care of all this thing validate the user access again the uh, segregation of <coughs> duty matrices the next is sap change control so no matter what type of sap audit you experience some level of chain control assessment is usually part of the audit procedure change control refer to the process for initiating creating reviewing and approving change to the sap application and relative infrastructure components so what we can do we can remove the uh, unnecessary from uh, uh, programmer access from a uh, production so that they cannot bypass the change management route so basically we should not give the production access to any programmer if we are giving that should be only display access if they need use standard uh, change request form it should be a process for change management and we should be following it maintain a pre-transport checklist for emergency changes uh, complete skipped steps post implementation and uh, develop test plans detail commercent with the complexity of the change and experience of those involved into the testing resolve unnecessary testing provide uh, before going live the next is interface management and monitoring so rarely does an organization use sap as its sole application so as a result interface to and from the application are common interface procedure should ensure that information is received and process completely data is only process one and uh, any reprocessing procedure uh, ensure data is not duplicate if stored in a holding area between system data is protected from modification basically the integrity monitoring process both detect and resolve uh, potential file completeness and integrity issue so what we can do we can ensure resolution not just notification of interface problem as as soon as possible control and monitor the changes to job schedules so basically generally if there is an interface created background job will run and that background job will uh, basically get the data transfer from one system to another system so it should be monitored properly if there is any change that we need to be looked into it if there is any error with that that should be looked into high priority and make sure we will not lose any data data will not get modified and um, and and you know it's complete so this is what we are having uh, corresponding to ITGC. Thank you for joining this session.